We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Lord, the entrance of your word giveth life and understanding to the simple. We thank you because we are privileged among all humans on earth to be refreshed whenever we come into your presence to hear from the throne of God directly. This is a privilege you have given to us, your children, to enjoy your mercy and your goodness. Lord, here is another time. Prepare our heart. Cause our hearts to be fertile enough to receive your word this evening. Open the eyes of our understanding and help us to see beyond our physical ability and sight so that we can attain the height that you have prepared for us all. We surround the whole of this place with the blood of Jesus Christ. We rebuke the powers of hell and the gates of the enemy. Every little force that is around to cause trouble, we overcome them. We plead the blood of Jesus. Let the fire of God attend to us. Let there be a refining fire that we revive every soul, every single human in this place. That when we live here, we will live here changed, sanctified, and glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be seated. The topic is the little forces. The little forces that spoil the vine. I want to appreciate the person that preached in the morning. He did a lot of explanation of what the forces are. And for the sake of those who were not here in the morning, I just want to make a brief explanation on that. Uh, before we go to that, let's take the test. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the forces, the little forces, that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Praise the Lord. Little forces that spoil the vine. Take us the foxes, the little forces that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Grapes, our vines have tender grapes. The, for a force is uh, a carnivorous animal. It eats flesh. And it belongs to the family of dog. It's like a dog. It has long ears, pointed mouth. And it is very, very stubborn. It destroys the vine so much, especially the little ones. Where you think they cannot assess, the small ones will assess them. And it will do greater damages to the vine. Upon all trees in the world, when Jesus was describing himself, he said, I am the true vine. So the vine is something that is very, very precious. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and ye are the branches. My father is what? Is a vine dresser. The force is an animal that is cunning and very, very clever. In fact, um, if you look at Noma Dictionary, other synonyms of the fox is crafty, somebody that is very crafty, somebody that is cunning, has 
a lot of senses at his back. Somebody that can trick you within a second is also called a fox. So the fox is uh, a kind of animal. It eats flesh. It also destroys the vine. I don't know how many of us uh, did agriculture, either practical one or theory in school. There is something we call the bed. Not the bed, not the mocha form, not the vital form. There's something we call bed. Prepare the bed. It's like a ridge, but it's flat. You do your seedling, seedling on top. Do I have a witness? Do we have some practicing farmers or... Yes, we used to do it. And uh, when you prepare the bed and plant your seedlings, it's a nursery. You use that one to nurse them. When they grow up to a stage, you remove them from there and do your normal planting. That bed, that process of seedling is a very delicate one. I remember in the village when we used to do it, um, when we plant pepper, pepper, tomato, on the last key, you need to prepare a lot of beds and do your normal seedling. One thing we do is that you have to get a net, net, fishing net, and surround them very well so that fowl will not enter inside. So that also, lizard will not enter inside. If the lizard gets inside, it will eat the seeds. And it will destroy the seedlings because they are tender. Why am I talking about this thing? They are tender. Very, very weak. Very, very weak. And you also need to cover the top so that harsh weather will not destroy them. Both sun and rain. Sometimes if the rain falls, you discover that everything will be washed away. That is why you need a bed to raise it beyond the normal ground level. So when the cry is raised here, please catch the foxes, the little foxes that destroy the vine, catch them before they do havoc. Why? Because our vines, our grapes are tender. They could be destroyed. They could be destroyed. In the journey of life, there are stages where we need intensive care. For instance, a baby that is born prematurely, that baby needs more than 100% attention. Because that life is very, very fragile. I remember one we took care of in St. Andrew's Hospital when I was at me there. The baby was 0.94%. I mean, a kg. 0.94 kg. It's still in my head. The light then not goes off because the baby needs warmth in the incubator. And you need to feed the baby regularly. You need intensive care for that baby. That is how tender the human destiny can be sometimes. Not at all times, but sometimes. And there are stages in the life of the human being that we need to apply intensive care so that what God has purposed for our destiny can come to pass. There are forces, little forces everywhere. There are some people in this world, before their birth, God would announce their birth before their arrival. People like Samson. People like Jesus Christ. People like Esau and Jacob. Their birth were announced. People like John the Baptist. Angels have to announce their birth. Why? Because these people, the lives, the destinies of other people are hung on them. 
Their failure will lead to the failures of many, of thousands and millions of people. And these people need intensive care. You make sure that from the time of pregnancy till when they are born and grow up to adulthood, you give them intensive care. There are little foxes everywhere. Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 13, verse 31 and 32. Luke 13, 31 and 32. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, that means they were telling Jesus, get thee out and depart, depart hence, for Herod will kill you. The people were seeing Herod as a threat to the life of Jesus. And Jesus knew who Herod was. Do you remember what happened when Jesus was born? All infants within the time that, the, that Herod inquired, that was another Herod, they killed all of them. Jesus knew that the person talking is not just a king, not just a governor. But look at what, excuse me, look at the, how Jesus addressed him. Verse 32. And he said unto him, Go ye and tell that fox. He called a governor, a fox. Go ye and tell that fox. What would they tell him? Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today, and tomorrow, and the third day, I shall be perfected. Today, I will cast out demons and heal the sick. Today and tomorrow, I will cast out demons and heal the sick. And on the third day, I will accomplish my goal. The fox is that person, is that enemy, is that particular thing. It could be a habit that does not want you to achieve your goal. That particular thing that steals your time away from you. If you've been into agriculture before, either on a large scale or on a small scale, you discover that each time something happens to your crop, there's always a problem. It will take you backward. Like um, all these Fulani herdsmen destroying people's crops. We may not know how much those people, the farmers, feel. Because we don't have farms. I have witnessed them. These are forces in Nigeria. These are big forces, not little forces. Big forces in Nigeria. I have witnessed them. Um, after planting yams, after borrowing money and putting in millions in your farm, they would command the cows to enter the farm and eat the tubers. They would harvest them and eat the tubers. And they will be smoking and sucking gari. In fact, there was a day, I was still in the village then, the cow, they went from where they normally graze and entered the residential area where people build houses. And they were grazing people's cassava before my very eyes. So I was holding a collapse. I was telling the villagers, let's do something. Let's do something. They said, oh, you know, get sense. Don't you have sense? What do you want to do? These people are dangerous, so better allow them to graze. I said, please, let's do. And they were going to where my farm was. Little forces that spoil the vine. They are everywhere. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, the government, the government, there are people in power that backs. They back these people. 
You can't prosecute them. If you kill one, if you kill one cow, 20 people will go in for it. So I became angry. I dropped my cutlass with somebody. I met the Abuki man. I entered inside the cow, he heard. I told him, I said, look at me. You see my eyes? I can die with you here now. If you do not command this your cow to go, me and you, we will die here now. And if we die, if me and you die, your cow nourish house. He saw my eyes and spoke one language, and not the cow turned. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life. For what? For the sheep. Passion. What you can find in the life of the speaker here is passion. Remember, the speaker was not the one going to cast the little forces. The speaker is saying, cash us. Cash us. Help us cash the little forces. Because our grapes are tender. They are too weak. They can't withstand this horror. They can't withstand it. If an enemy, uh, if there are arm robbers or enemies knocking at the door and everybody in the house knows that these are enemies, they have bombs. Whether you open or not, they will throw the bomb into the house. How many fathers can volunteer to go and open the door here? Say, well, I'm the head of this house. Um, and I am to protect all of you. How many fathers can volunteer to go and... Oh, they say, we need just one person. One person, follow us. One person should follow us. How many fathers can do it? Yes, I'm seeing some hands. Only one, not be hands. Yes, some hands too. Yes, yes, thank you. Do you know that this Christmas and New Year that just passed, there was no big issue like that to best of families. There was quarry. Because if you don't have money, say there is no money. Don't use quarry to uh, dodge your responsibilities. Don't. You are the head of the home and you have your own responsibilities. Passion for your family. Cash us. Help us cast the little forces that we come and destroy my family. Cast them and kill them. Praise the Lord. The human life never begins in this world without the knowledge of God. I told somebody yesterday, I told the person, I said, look, listen, there are two, thi two things I believe so strongly. No life comes into this world without the knowledge of God. There is nothing like sneaking into this world. You can't sneak into this world. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run through and fro all over the earth. His eyes are everywhere, through and fro. And no life can leave this world without the knowledge of God. You can't come in here without the knowledge of God. And you can't depart. Once anybody is living, God is aware. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. 2 Peter 1, uh, 1, verse 3. 2 Peter 1, 3. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. His divine power has given us everything we need in this world for life and for godliness. And I wonder, uh, we've been reading the Bible for years now. How many times did God talk about Satan, the presence of Satan in the world? Many times. When Jesus came, how many times did Jesus talk about the presence of Satan in the world? Very few times. The presence of Satan and his angels 
Fallen angels, they were never the concern of God and the concern of Jesus. Because they are finished business. In Genesis chapter 2, when God, okay, Genesis chapter 1, beginning from verse 26. Look at verse 28. You can read verse 26 at home. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fire of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Over every living thing, including Satan himself. Was Satan on earth? When God was giving this command to man, Satan was on earth. The fallen angels, we are in this world. But God said, I have given you dominion. Go and override them. Replenish and multiply. A lot of times, we focus so much on the presence of the enemies and forget where we are going to. How can a normal human being fast for 90 days and stop working and you are a family man, you are a family woman? Because you have enemies. The kind of dreams I have, uh, I want to, I'm not saying you should declare fasting. But don't be too conscious of the presence of the enemies. Because the Bible says, my God will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In their presence, he will prepare a table before me. We should fast and pray. But a lot of times, we focus on witches and wizards. Instead of praising God, we are binding and casting. I was coming from Port Harcourt this December. And uh, I was the last person that boarded the bus. It was a coastal bus. Night movement. And as I was coming, I sat close to a young man who is so bossy, spread his leg and pushed me to one corner. So he was speaking it us. No English. I did not hear any single word from him. Tongues. And then our vehicle, it was on speed. And it entered gallop. People started screaming Jesus, shouting, including him. He prayed for almost one hour. When we get to, so when, whenever we get to a police checkpoint, I will have some peace because I will tell him, bros, please gather your legs a bit. He was praying and he never cared about the, my presence there. Very conscious of danger. But me, as I entered the vehicle and said my little prayer, I knew the angels of God were with me. Wherever I go, Psalm 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And when people were shouting Jesus, shouting Jesus, I was relaxed. Because I know that God, his presence is with me. I did not sense the presence of danger. A lot of times, we spend so much time focusing on the enemy that we have no time to think and invent things. Somebody invented this microphone. Somebody invented this wristwatch. Somebody invented printing. But the Christianity of today is die, 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 die. Money, afternoon, night. You have no time to pray and ask God to open your eyes. To see new areas you can invest in, in your business. No time to seek the face of God. And I told somebody, I said, whosoever that always nickname people, my mother is a witch, my father is a witch, they don't progress. Many times they don't progress. Because they have a reason to fail. If you have your reason and you have explanations why you are poor, you will not Think of how to come out of the poverty and oppression. Because you have a reason. If not be my mama, eh? <clears throat> my family, the witchcraft struggle. If they look you like this, you go mad. Like say, person where you detest so. He falls from heaven, he no get family. 
Now Africa, all of us, they Did I tell you my own? If you come for prayers after finishing all this story, and I begin to tell you my own, you will end up praying for me and fasting for me. One of my brothers was, he called me from village. I was telling me, this is our auntie. It's a wish. Do you know that uh, she did this? So, 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 so. And he said, even the accident you had, I think uh, she has a hand in it. And I told her, I said, wait, wait. If anybody confess that he or she has a hand in the accident, I will buy drink for the person. Let the person drink. Because they have done me no wrong. They only ended up in making my eyes to be strong. My life changed. Praise the Lord. We should, should not be too conscious. We should also focus on the tenderness of the vine. We should focus on how to better our lives and move forward in life. We shouldn't have any reason to fail. If there is nobody to train you in your family, move on with your life. Do job and move on. God will bless you. If I some graduates that got miracle jobs, let me use a living example. There is one of our mommies in this church who testified in Divine Encounter that a young man, a graduate, was serving her as a driver. So she said, you can't be my driver. With this, your qualification, she took it, the burden of this young man, as her own problem. And she was always praying for him until the young man got a good job. Why? Humility. Humility. The human destiny, at one point or the other, could be very, very fragile, and any little thing can destroy it. Before the birth of Samson, the angel told the mother and the father, Manoah, that this child is going to be a Nazarite. There should be no, nothing like drinking alcohol. How much effort are we putting into preserving the tenderness of the grape and the vine? How much effort? There are lots of destinies wasting away. A lot of destiny. And everybody has a story. Me, I have my own story. You have your own story. But your story should be the story that inspires somebody to do better in life. It was not the Philistine that killed Samson. No. Samson was indestructible. When he, was young, when he was young, the parents did everything to cool, they could to make sure they preserved his life. And he survived and became the strongest man that ever lived. But there were some little forces in his life. Our brother in the morning focused a lot on that. The little forces in people's lives. A little force was in his life. This man, he had a lot of flair for beauty, physical attraction. And that killed him. The strongest man in the world is not the one that has gone to battle and destroyed all his enemies and became victorious. That's not the strongest man. The world that we, we, every time we say knowledge is power, knowledge is power, knowledge is power, but we have seen people with knowledge failing. We have seen marriage counselors whose marriages are not working. We have seen people who read business admin, yet they can't run any business. Knowledge is not, does not make you to be the strongest person. Samson was strong. In fact, there is nobody that was as wise as Solomon. Solomon was the wisest man so far. But because he failed to deal with his little forces, he failed. 
And my own conclusion is that the strongest man on earth is not even the wisest. It's not the one that has financial power. It's not the one that has knowledge. It's not the one that has wisdom. The strongest man on earth is the person that can control his passion. If you can deal with your own battles and conquer your passions, I call you the strongest man. If you can have self-discipline, discipline yourself enough, control your passion. You are not carried away by food. You are not carried away by men and women. You are not carried away by power. You are not carried away by pride. You are strong and you are a winner. Because if you tell yourself, I am going to a so place, you will get there. But we do not receive the spirit of fear, but the spirit of what? Self-control. Samson could not control himself. Solomon could not control himself. Samson had this physical power that has no connection with physical training and acquisition of physical tactics and skills in battle. But the Bible says a lot of times that the Spirit of God will come upon him and the fetters, the chain, we melt like was. So the source of his power was spiritual, not physical. But Samson failed. Sometimes when you read the book of Proverbs, read the songs of Solomon, you see wisdom. Wisdom embedded. Wisdom in it. But this man failed. Um, I know a lot of people, they try to make things up. But there is an amount of truth. Some of the things people use in magic today, researchers and historians, they said they were invented by Solomon. Some of the things, even what we call the Star of David, called the Hexagram. Hex means spell. Gram means diagram. Hexagram. They draw it on the ground. It's the most powerful satanic sign where they want to cast spell or perform magic. They draw it on the ground, stand in the middle of it so that they can be protected and invoke demons. Some people said it originated from Solomon. Because when he fell, Satan took advantage of the wisdom. It is better for a fool to be wicked than to have a wise man becoming wicked. If a wise man is wicked, run for your life. Run. Run. What is that tender part of your destiny you need to protect? There are times you go to the extent. Let me read a scripture for you. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4. Hebrews 12 verse 4. Hebrews 12 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. The first time I saw this scripture, I quickly underlined it. In, in terms of striving against that little force, there are times you come to resist even with the drops of your blood. There are Delilahs everywhere. Delilahs everywhere. Trying to pull somebody down. There are 419ers everywhere. Some sit in the pew you sit in church. They could wreck an aspect of your life if you are not careful. Until we stand on our ground, recognize our weaknesses and deal with them, we will go nowhere. It is easier to fall than climb. It is easier to fall from the top than climb up. Some of us, we think, God bless me, God bless me. The battle there is stronger than the battle here when you are poor. Do you know it takes more effort to sustain weight than gather weight? Eh? 
It takes more effort to sustain riches, wealth, than gather wealth. So when you get to the top, you think all the battles are over. It's a lie. You will still need watchfulness and carefulness to guard what the Lord has given to you. Look at Moses. Pharaoh was a fox in his life. One thing some of us don't even understand is that we think that life begins when we become adults. It's a lie. Life, our lives begin from the moment your star appears. From the moment your star appears, life begins. Some of us don't know how to keep prophecies. Ways of prophecies, we can't keep them. The deepest secrets of a man, of any destiny, they are hidden in prophecy. The Egyptian magicians, the calculators of time, the astrologers, they knew that the children of Israel will stay for 300 years. And they knew also that a savior will be born to take them out of Egypt. And they started killing all the males born at that time. But God laid it in the heart of the mother of Moses. And she prepared a basket for that delicate life. Took the life somewhere, placed it on top of the water. And because the life was so tender, tender grapes, she asked the sister Miriam to wash, hide in the bush and wash. A lot of times, some of us don't know how to strategize. Some of us don't know how to cover our lives. You go to Facebook sometimes, you see people having nine, nine credits. Nine credits. They will snap it. Parents will snap it and post them on Facebook. Oh, sorry. Sorry, oh. Sorry. People no longer cover their lives. You go to Facebook, anybody that wants to engage, you want to imitate a Igbo man? You want to imitate a Igbo? You want to be civilized. In those days, you want to engage, you take drink, you go to the parents and make, conclude some arrangements and then come and appear before the lady. Today, see somebody kneeling down and they are videoing you. Sometimes, live, Facebook live. When you have problem in your engagement, you call witches and wizards. I told somebody, if you are sweet as honey, Women will lick you and eat up the plates. They will lick you, finish you, and eat up the container. There will be no trace remaining for you. So also women too. It is only beautiful flowers that attract insects. Beautiful flowers, they attract a lot of insects. And if you have no coverage, you end up becoming naughty. They will lick up your oil and leave the shaft. They will be the one, after they have got to marry, they will be the one, uh, sister, I'm praying for you, don't worry. I am praying for you, the Lord will do something in your life. They would have answered the prayer, but they are on the earth and they ran away. Even Jesus Christ, when God knew that the grape was very, very tender, God told Joseph, take this child and escape to Africa, to Egypt. Even the Savior escaped because it was a dangerous time. The Bible says, 2 Peter 1, 3, that his divine power has given us everything we need for this life and for godliness, whatsoever thing we need had been given to us. How many of us know that the lives of our children are delicate and that we need to protect them? The first biggest injury I had was this hand. You have the honor, the fibula here. The two, I mean, the honor, the radius. Yeah. 
When I took first, I was running to go and broadcast the news. As I was coming back, I used to run a lot. I fell. As I leaped, I fell. And I was saying, now my hand, my hand. As I removed my hand, because it was painful, I held it very tightly. As I removed my hand, I saw that the hand was bending. If you look very well, it's still bent. Because I could not control my joy well. I went to broadcast that I took first in my class. And this is what I got. And when they were treating it, I said, it's too painful. I used to run away. Thank God that <laughs> you see the light. Like Before your husband buys you a car, you have told everybody that my husband wants to buy me a car. Even your friends, they know how much your husband receives as a salary. No secret anymore. You go to some people's Facebook wall or Twitter, you see the history of their lives. I said this once, they never made Facebook for you. Facebook was not produced for you. Because no secret, you just go to some people. Sometimes I ask some people, I ask a lady, I said, so you have crossed the winner's chapel, Abby? She said, uh, uh, I said, you, thank God you are back now. How did I know? Facebook. One of my goddaughter, I called her on phone. I said, why did you keep your heart so low for people to break it? Avoid men that are still wearing pampas. So when we were talking, I told her, I said, it's because of your status on social media. Somebody broke your heart, you tell the whole world that your heart had been broken. Our destiny is precious. Your life is very precious. Know how to manage your information. Especially the information of your children. Manage them very well. Every man, every woman should have secrets. We have no secret. Let me tell you. Do you know the best place? The, the best place. Do you know the best place? Your friends keep your secrets. Your closest friends. Not all of them. They are still good people. But they keep your secrets. Not in their heart. Too, in the deep hearts of their friends. This thing I'm telling you now. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. So if you know it's a secret, why don't you keep secret secret? That the best place to keep the secret is the heart of your friend. What is that thing that is eating you up? Every human being has weaknesses. Every human being. We have our own weaknesses. I preach with myself a lot. The first time I came to worry on my birthday, 2016, came to, I mean, uh, 2006. The first time I came to worry to stay, I did not plan it. It was anger. My mother used to tell me, Hosanna, you are good, but anger spoiled you. Anger has spoiled you. It was my problem. But thank God. God has worked on me. And he's still working on me. The day one of our priests, God be transferred, asked me one day, Zana, do you even grow angry at all? I've never seen your anger any day. When I got home, I knelt down and I thank God. I said, God, this big weakness, you are helping me to deal with it. Some of us, we can't hide our weaknesses. You need to hide your weaknesses from your enemies and expose them to those who can help you. Praise the Lord. What is that thing that is eating you up? It can be a bottle of beer. There is no food in the house, but you must go and register your name every blessed day. You must go there to register your name. It is not all friends that should be your friends. This is a new year. Your resolution should also touch friendship. There are some people that are little forces, little forces, monitoring spirits around you, destroying your vine, destroying your vine. 
When your friend will be the one to say, wear that okoro that you are marrying as a husband. I don't even know why upon all these men, whether this one or this one you pick. Your best friend. Every force in your life, you must remove them. Finally, the vicar preached a message here. And he talked about cutting something off that is painful. Something that is painful. To move on in life, some foxes, they have some advantages. There are some ways they may be helping you. But so long as it will not lead to the fulfillment of your destiny, cut it off. Cut it off. Bad on your head. Can you talk to the Lord? What are those little foxes that you need to deal with? Some may be very stubborn. Some may be the very part of you. Remember what Jesus said, I am the vine, I am the true vine. Every branch that does not bear fruit, my father, the vine dresser, will cut it off. It's painful. If God will cut off unreproductive branches, why do you think you don't need some pruning? Cut them off. That finger that is causing you to fall. That particular habit that is eating your time, eating your resources. It could be merry beds, merry beds. One new number has arrived. This number must enter. You borrow money. Could be gambling. Could be alcohol. Could be women or men. Cut it off. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lord, make us practical instruments for progress in our lives. May we not pull down our own lives. We have no excuse. We have no reason to fail in this world. Because you have given us everything we need. Including dominion over the devil and over the powers of the enemies. You have given us wisdom. You said we should be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Help us to identify those little forces. Give us a grace to catch them all and destroy them. Lord, in any way we are weak, may your strength be revealed. Paul said, your strength is made perfect in my weakness. Therefore, when I am weak, then I am strong. May that thing that we are known for as weakness let it become the reference point of our strengths. Thank you for your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.